Hey, it's Daryl Olson uh, from the Jackson Fishing Team and continuing on with our, I believe, our fourth fly for delayed harvest. Maybe it's not good beginning to look more like they're all going to be junk or trash flies, as some people would call them. But the next one is going to be uh, the woolly bugger. You know, it's a time-tested uh, fly, very popular amongst new fly tires to tie because it's simple and uh, a lot of a lot of versatility with that fly. It can be panfish, trout, musky, pike, bass, brim, even some saltwater species. But you know that all depends on the size hook and uh, that you're using. But uh, today we're going to be uh, tying a delayed harvest. Uh, woolly bugger, especially for those trout that have been newly planted into the waterway. And you know, normally it's tied black, brown, olive, maybe even short truce is be a good especially that might be a good color for for delayed harvest. But the the two colors you might want to consider is gonna be uh some kind of bright pink or an orange, bright orange pattern. But uh, we're going to tie it a little differently. We are going to put a bead on it, but it's going to be a plastic bead, a glass bead, or whatever you want to call it. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we look at it. All right, why don't we take a look at the fly that we're going to tie. So here's a, a pink woolly bugger and an orange one. But the one I'm going to tie for you will be like an orange one. Um, the pink one, I've tied these pink ones on weighted. So the only weight will be the bead the glass bead and the orange one is tied with some some lead wire and we'll talk about that when we get to that part when we're putting that material on and uh, we'll go ahead and explain the color the, the pattern as we go along or the materials and so why don't we go ahead and take off our flies and um, I'm going to be using a a 3x long nymph hook at size 8. Um, it's got a down eye. You could use one that's not a down eye, that's a straight eye. Or uh, you could even use a 2xl on it or whatever hook you, you have. I would probably recommend that if you're putting a bead on it at least a 2x or a 3x on there. Maybe you can even tie them on a 4x. but. Uh, But I'm debarbing my hook, and uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's a little glass bead. This one's in orange. And there's not a particular a particular um, way to put them on there. I just dropped my bead. But you can either get your uh, beads like this and from tires, beads are called. Um, use a large is what I'm using for uh, for this uh, this one here. And that little package, you know, probably is. Uh, On the spendy side, but if you wanted to save money, you could go to like Michael's or Hobby Lobby and you can get these uh, tube of uh, glass beads or check seed beads. And um, this is in rose, or I use it for a pink color. And uh, you'll want to get for the size hook we're tying on, you're going to want at least a six, what they call a six aught, six aught size bead in in there. All right. Since I said we were going to weight our fly, I'm going to be weighing it with uh, some .01 lead free wire.
and uh, we're going to put 15 wraps on here. And we off. And I'm going to squish this down. And I'm not going to put it up in the bead because the bead has an opening that's a little bit bigger at both ends. It's the same size opening, but uh, it'll mash through the through the bead, and the bead will. Uh, I can show you there. So the the bead really doesn't doesn't stop it really too well. So I'm just going to put some thread there, and um, I'm going to see if I can get this fluorescent orange thread the last on this fly here. It's a great day to be tying flies for me. It's raining today. take this back to the, where the barb is, or used to be for my case. And I'm going to be using some uh, orange marabou. In this case I believe it's called hot orange. Except I'm not going to use the whole whole marabou because you know it's a little hook. That's that there's a lot of wasted material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off or tear off what I what I plan to use. And I'm just just kind of like when I'm getting my fibers for tying fancier flies, you know, or need some, some feathers, just kind of rip it off. I don't know if you saw that because I wasn't looking at my monitor. And uh, do the same thing here. And then and that's probably about an inch or an inch and a quarter width. And you pull that shank away and it'll break off. And now I've got my little bit of marabou for a smaller hook. And you're going to want to, it's going to want to be two, uh, two length, but actually one length, one hook shank behind the hook, and the other hook shank will be uh, on top of the hook. And I'm just going to tie it in up to... up to where my materials will are ending at the end of that. Uh, I just gave it a little locking wrap underneath there. And I'm going to try to tie this in to level off up to where I where my lead starts there. trim that off and we'll clean it up a little bit and just to make sure I'm just going to see that how those are not even I'm just going to pinch that don't cut it with your scissors at least pinch off Try to get those about the same, same there, and, and that'll look better than 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 using your scissors. Just pinch them off, tear them off on there. 
Next I'm going to put on a, uh, one strand of uh, Crystal Flash and Pearl. Or you could use whatever color you got. You could use orange or that. Kind of even up those ends. And I'm going to put one on the far side. And one on my near side. And then I'm just going to trim that off just past, just past that here, marabou. Next I'm going to use some, uh, put add on some medium copper. That's going to help tie my, uh, Mirror or my hackle in to make it last a little longer. Start that right up next to the bead and try to keep it under the under the hook. Next, I'm going to use uh, some uh, some bugger hackles. Make sure it's about size for the for your your hook. I'm going to just tie it in at the back. I could tie it in at the front, but I'm going to keep this simple. Not complicated. I'm trying to use the, the wire to actually anchor in the back part. There's many ways to tie your bugger hackle in. Next I'm going to use is some uh, some medium Chanel and in this case I'm using um, orange not orange I just don't know where the package is to show you and I'm going to strip off so my body's not too thick until I get get that core material exposed and start that right back here. Tie that in. Now I'm just going to go ahead and wrap the chenille body as close to each other as possible. And this is really soft material. So when I'm wrapping in the hackle, it'll actually, the quill will dig into uh, will dig into the, into the material and kind of protect it there as well. locking wraps in front and behind. Turn this away so my thread's on the bottom and I don't cut it. Or you could push it out of the way. Alright. Next
next we're going to do is we're going to wrap our hackle. And we're going to try to fold, fold the fibers back. You can wet your fingers and it'll help fold them back. Don't pull too tight, you know, that tip's fragile. And then what I'm going to do is I like to put in two full wraps at the back of the body here. And then counter wrap going forward. And you can just see how that quill from the hackle here just buries itself into those, uh, into that body to protect it a little bit better. Just let it go fall into that, that in between those fibers. And then when we get to the front here, I'm going to try to give it at least one or two wraps in the front. Fold those back, and I'll clip this off. And then I'm going to counter wrap this wire. I'm going to give it at least normally, you know, one full turn in the back here, and I'm going to wiggle as I go. And it'll, it'll help prevent it'll help prevent uh, trapping some fibers. Give it a couple wraps here to lock that wire in. Pull these fibers back again. Try to helicopter this off. It doesn't seem to want to cooperate, which is okay. And if you get tired of doing that, because I am, I'll just trim that off with my leave a little band there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's that'll be good for a little hot spot. 
behind the bead. Or if you wanted to, you could cover it up with uh, some dubbing. And we'll apply some cement to the thread. Close up my glue before I tip it over. And we'll give it a whip finish. Sorry about that. Spam phone call. And we'll trim that off. It looks pretty good. I don't look like I've trapped any fibers. Looks like an excellent fly on there. All right. That was fun. Tie up a few of these in size 8. Maybe even size 10, a little smaller, maybe for those stocky stalkers. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You could go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and get yourself some, some uh, glass beads or plastic beads or whatever you want to call these. And uh, for the size hook I was using, I was using a 6 aught size bead or size large if you're going to buy beads from... Uh, from a fly shop on there on that part all right tie up a few give them a try chase after them stockers here now that late harvest season is upon us educate those fish and we will see you on the water